Hey guys, welcome back again to my channel, The Appalachian Home. So today what we're gonna be doing is making some stencils, but these are different than the stencils that you have seen previously on my channel. So before I've usually used adhesive vinyl and temporary stencil material, a one time use and you throw it away. But today I wanted to make some permanent stencils. These are gonna be stencils that you can use over and over again, like for tile and other products like that. try these out to see how these worked and I actually got these off of Amazon in 12 by 12 sheets and I'll show you a clip of these here so like I said I ordered these from Amazon and they were I think around seven dollars for 12 sheets and I will leave a link if you want to check that product out and as you can see they're very thick they're a lot thicker than the vinyl and other things that I've used before it's just like stencil material the only difference I found in this material is it's glossy you can see the light shining here on it um, it is glossy on both sides stencil material that I've seen before is kind of matte but we're going to try these today and see how they work and I've already made some stencils on Inkscape and I'm going to show you guys those if you want to see how I did those in another video later on but for today, I'm just going to show you how you can use this material to create your own permanent stencils. So here are the stencils that we're going to be doing today. This first one is a tile pattern, and today I'm going to be using an 8 inch by 8 inch tile pattern. So I created this in Inkscape, and I'll try to leave a link for it below. And then the second stencil, I thought I would try some grain sack stripes. If you saw my last video, I did some signs that had some grain sack stripes on them. So I thought it would be neat to have a reusable stencil that I could use on pillows and towels and things like that. And then the last stencil I actually made in Cricut Design Space and I created my own stencils but I'm going to leave the link down below. Creative Market has some stencil fonts that you can purchase so you don't have to go through all of the motions that I did of creating stenciled letters. So now I'm in Cricut Design Space and I'm just going to show you how to upload this file. In this video, I'm not going to show you how I created this file, but I will try to post another video along with this one so you can go back over there if you want to learn how to make this pattern design and others. I'll just quickly show you what kind of pattern this is going to make. And I'll leave a link in the description box where you can download this pattern if you guys want to try this. If you already have a pattern or if you want to use these, I'll show you how to upload this into Design Space. You just click Upload and click the file that you want to upload from your computer. And then you will save it as a cut file. Make sure you erase all the areas that you don't want. And then you just save it as a cut file. And then you'll click on the file and insert it into your canvas. Now I'm going to put this on an 8 inch tile so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller about 7.8 inches and that way I can make sure that the stencil will not go over my project. So when you go to make your stencils I always like to move mine. I'm moving mine down about half an inch that way when I cut my stencil I'll have enough room around the edges so that my paint will not go over the edge of my stencil. Okay, so I'm going to be using my 12 inch cutting mat because these are 12 inch sheets. So if you're new to Cricut, Cricut does have different size mats. This one is a 12 by 12 mat. They do have a 12 by 24 inch mat, but I'm going to be using this to cut the stencils. And I'm also using some washi tape to hold the stencil material down. My mat is not as sticky as a new mat would be. So that's just a precaution to keep the stencil in place as it's cutting. So I did a lot of test cuts, as you can see here on this piece here, to see which material setting worked best. And so what I ended up doing was just creating my own custom material, and I'll show you the settings that I use for this. When you're getting ready to cut on your mat, it will ask you to set your material, and I just clicked Browse All Materials, and I searched through here trying to find a material that would work for this particular stencil. So I ended up going to Custom Materials down at the bottom, and once you go into this list, there's a long list of all the materials Cricut has preset in its design program. And you can edit all of these. There's a button on the right. You can edit the settings. But what I ended up doing was going all the way to the bottom of this list and then clicking on the green button that says create a new material. I just named my material and I'm naming this one stencil blanks six mil. And that way I'll remember the thickness 
and I can go back to this over and over again. So I'm just saving that. Once you do that, you can go to the top of the screen and adjust all the settings. The setting here on this green bar is your pressure of your cutting blade. So I ended up moving this all the way up to the end. The middle box is the number of times Cricut will cut around an object. So you can set this up really high as much as 10 times. For this particular setting, I'm setting it to three times. And then the other box is just your blade. You can use a deep cut blade, a fine point blade, or a rotary blade. Um, I would probably have done better off to use a deep cut blade, but for this, I'm just using a fine point blade. And now that I've created a custom material, I can just go into Browse Materials, type in the material that I just created, and it will pop up and I can select that now. And I'm also hitting this star to add it to my favorites. That way it will always be in my list when I go to cut. And now you can go ahead and cut the stencils. So the first couple of times I tried this, I had it on a lower setting than I just showed you, and some of the inserts were kind of hard to pop out. I had to apply some pressure and pop those out, but once I adjusted it to the settings that I just showed you, they came out much easier as you'll see on this third stencil. Now this is the second stencil I created for the grain stripes and I'm just cutting it out exactly the same way. I'm moving it to the center of my mat and cutting it out the same way. And for the last stencil I created in Cricut, I cut it out the same way and this one turned out the best because this is the one I actually used the settings that I just showed you on. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and check out all of my videos. And don't forget to check the description box below for all the links that I told you about in the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.